Hello friends, welcome to Sea Astrology. My name is Rajesh Babar and today we will discuss about Bhrigu Nandi Nadi, the different techniques, concepts, what are the principles to be followed in this technique and one by one in every class I am going to teach you all the techniques of Bhrigu Nandi Nadi in very easy and simplified manner. There are a lot of videos on the YouTube but this is going to be a very different video for all those who are interested in learning Bhrigu Nandi Nadi techniques. So friends, welcome to Sia Astrology and the topic today we are going to take is Nadi Astrology. Yeah, means Nadi techniques. So before I start the video, before I begin the video, let's pray to Lord Ganesha and Lord Shanidev that there is happiness in everyone's life and both the gods will help us to learn this technique of Bhrigu Nandi Nadi and I bow to all sages like Bhrigu and all the sages who have shared this wonderful knowledge with us. So let's begin. So there are a lot of rules in Nadi Astrology which, which needs to be followed and this we are going to discuss one by one in every class. So first what is Nadi Astrology? You need to understand this. What are the Nadi techniques uh, given by the uh, respected Rishis? So Nadi does not take any Lagna. You need to, <coughs> if you wish, you can write down these notes because these are very important no need for lagna so i am going to explain one by one no need for nagla no need for dasha and no need for Varga charts. Varga charts means divisional charts. But in the late in the later stages, when you uh, when we will learn the advanced predictive techniques, in that we can use divisional charts and we can sometimes use lagna as well and sometimes we can use dasha as well. But in the basic, you can <coughs> note down this that Nadi does not need any lagna. Nadi does not need any Dasha for predictions. There are certain set of rules we need to follow and Nadi does not does not need any divisional charts or Varga charts as you have seen in a lot of books. They have given the example of this. So what Nadi requires is Jupiter. Jupiter is the life force. He is called the Jeeva Karaka and all my students they might uh, also write down the notes as well because they are very important. So what we need in Nadi is Jupiter. Jupiter is the life force. Jupiter is the native in caution. That means Jupiter is native the person who has come to discuss about his chart whether he is a male whether female it does not matter jeevakarka for both male and female is jupiter so prime focus must be given to jupiter and jupiter is the pillar of nadi jyotish lot of techniques lot of predictions come out of jupiter's progression and Eventually in coming classes, we will definitely learn about Jupiter progression, Saturn progression and Rahu progression, Moon progression. In Nadi, we don't use transits. We only use progression. This I will explain you in the upcoming classes. So for now, you can write down this. Jupiter is the native in question. He is the life force and he is the Jeevakarka. So for every chart we need jupiter's placement which 
the sign it is placed in which house it is placed what are the degrees of the jupiter in the natal chart this all we will take into consideration in the coming classes so this is the basic we need to understand what is nadi jyotish about so now in the next uh, now in the next step we will learn about the aspects which are considered very important in nadi astrology so i request all my students to please write down this because this is very important when you will enter the predictive classes or the advanced classes and if your basics are not clear then you would be struggling in the prediction part or in the advanced classes some of the points will go over your head so let's begin with aspects what are the rules of aspects in nadi astrology this is very very important friends and you need to understand this very carefully the conventional aspects of saturn of mars jupiter and rahu are taken as per vedic rule so first to rule saturn it has special aspects of 3 10 and seventh aspect is common for all planets then mars it has special aspect of 4 and 8 seventh is common for all jupiter it has 5 and 9th aspect and the seventh aspect is common as per वेदिक और कन्वेंशनल एस्ट्रोलॉजी राहु एंड केतु दे हैव एस्पेक्ट ऑफ फाइव एंड नाइन्थ एंड अ स्पेशल एस्पेक्ट ट्वेल्थ एस्पेक्ट वेर एवर राहु इज प्लेस्ड इन द चार्ट he is going to aspect the 12th house from its location from its placement this i will explain you with the help of examples in the coming classes for just remembrance you need to round uh, you need to write down all the rules of this conventional astrology these rules are taken in the vedic astrology as well and bhrigu and nandi uh, bhrigu nadi and vedic astrology they both are combined they both are attached to either each other bhrigu nandi nadi is only uh, uh, bhrigu nandi dali nadi gives its predictions on the basis of the significations of the planet so this we will understand but you need to write down <coughs> these rules i will not rub them and let's jump into second rule of aspects this is very very important and i am not going to make south indian chart here but in the coming classes i will definitely try and explain everyone with the south indian chart as well because of the of because there is a space constraint constraint so i am not able to make south indian chart so in the coming videos i would be preparing a south indian chart as well so people who are learning through south indian te uh, techniques they can also understand this video because this is very important now we will jump to the second rule of aspects the first rule i have explained already now the second rule let's assume sun is placed in the first half house of any natal kundali uh, any natal chart any chart you take in su into consideration i am assuming sun is placed in the lagna so second house this is the second house i am writing i'll mention here second house so any planet who is placed anywhere in the chart the succeeding house the house next to that planet is the future of that planet 
that means we will i will explain you in other words sun we are taking into consideration and next to sun in the second house in the succeeding house there is saturn so sun's future is saturn whatever the significations of saturn we will come to know in the coming classes that will explain the future of the sun in progression we will learn about this in uh, we will learn about this so succeeding means future and planets like we take sun in, into consideration and any planet let's say moon is placed here moon is in 12th house to sun because we are taking sun into consideration so the planet placed in the 12th house from the particular planet it denotes past of that particular planet and this we will learn elaborately in the coming classes so this moon is going to push sun to give some events in his life because the planet who is placed in the 12th house from any planet it will definitely try to push that planet to give benefic or malefic events in one's life that it will depend upon the friends and enemies chart that we will learn in the coming classes but for now this is very important i'll repeat it once again for so all my students who are watching this video kindly make notes of this because this is very important in the advanced lectures this will surely help you in the prediction part i am taking sun as the pillar sun into consideration from sun second house saturn is placed so the future of sun is saturn in the same way we take sun into consideration and moon is placed in the 12th house from the sun so this will definitely push sun like moon is going to push sun to give some events so later it will depend whether they are enemies or friends that we will discuss in the coming classes so this thing should be very clear to all my students i'll repeat again because this is very important lot of brigu nandi nadi predictions are going to come from this angle the planet sitting in next house to any planet is the future and the planet sitting behind that planet in the 12th house is your past or that planet pushes you to give some events this is the one second rule about the aspects now there is some twist which we are going to learn because this is very important and mostly lot of predictions are done on basis of this concept let's say i'll take sun again in, into consideration this is the third rule you need to follow now in the second house there are no planets so what we are going to do we will see in the natal chart any planet aspecting the second house from sun in that case we will take any planet aspecting the second house it's throwing his aspect on the second house will become the future of the sun this is the second rule then third rule i have already told you then we will jump to the fourth rule if no planet is aspecting or it's not putting his aspect on second house of sun then we will take rashi into consideration like the sign which is placed next to sun the lord of that sign will become the future of the sun and it will depend on where that lord is placed in the natal chart this you have to learn by heart because this is very very important i hope it's very clear to everyone every student who is watching this video please make sure that these these concepts are 100% clear to you now we will move ahead and third aspects rule we will study further and 
that is very very important you need to consider put your consideration on it let's say i'll take sun into consideration so we are talking about aspect second house and 12th house we have already finished now we are moving to trine aspects very important in nadi trine aspects let me put a circle over here trine means in vedic you call it trikon aspects but in vedic we don't take trine aspects but in brihunandi nadi trine aspect trine aspects are very very important and they give 100% result so let's i'll explain you with the help of example what are trine aspects and how they work i am taking sun into consideration so 1 2 3 4 5 this is the first trine let's say saturn is placed here this means this saturn is putting its fifth aspect or it's not called fifth aspect generally you can call it trine aspect as simple as that trine aspect so saturn is aspecting sun and in return sun is also aspecting saturn so this aspect will follow lifetime there will be lifetime events related to saturn and sun when progression jupiter comes and touches sun or saturn events will trigger that we will learn in the progression part now i'll go ahead let's say i place moon here moon is also in trine to sun 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so this is the first trine this is the second trine this you need to remember very carefully because lot of predictions are going to come through this this angle so this means sun saturn moon they are putting their aspect on each other means they are aspecting each other and this combination will definitely give a prediction but you need to understand how to decode this combination that we will learn in the coming classes but for now trying aspect must be clear so in order to but now this i have taken in a very simple way i will just try to rotate it in a different way so that you can understand let's say i move sun here 1 2 3 4 5 so this is the first trine from sun and if saturn is placed here 1 2 3 4 5 5 this is the second trine and if moon is placed here that means this 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 it became it becomes a trine so these are the aspects in bhrigu nandi nadi which work very well and they give 100% aspect so the basic rule is from any planet any planet from any planet into consideration the fifth house is the first trine and the ninth house is the second trine so it will what the results it will give all the planets are going to aspect each other in and that is called a trine aspect this is very important so i think three things i have covered uh, today in this class first we have learned about the conventional aspects that is similar as to vedic uh, concepts only the difference here is that rahu has the 12th aspect this is very very important rest all other planets they have the 7th aspect and the special aspects the trine aspects i have already explained you so this part i think is very clear to every student and if you have any confusion you can whatsapp me or you can call me so that i can clear your doubts so let's go ahead and learn the third rule of aspects that is also very very important and you need to understand that also that it is going to help you in predictions 
So what I am going to do, I am going to take sun into consideration. Let's say sun is placed here in any natal chart. When you are going through a natal chart, we take sun into consideration. I am just taking example because every time I am taking sun into consideration. So don't get confused that these aspects are only for sun. No, it is all for all the planets any planet you take into consideration so what i will do i'm not going to take sun into consideration in fact i will take venus into consideration so we will rotate some things so that so that you can understand so now what is the third rule of bhrigu nandi nadi aspects one two three any planet who is sitting or who is placed in third from any planet let's say we are taking <coughs> venus into consideration so the first house where the venus is placed this is the first house this is the second house this is the third house so that means this venus and saturn they have some aspect they have some connection so this will give an event this will give a prediction when we go in the predictive part this you have to remember because every planet who is placed in the chart and any planet placed third from it will definitely they both are connected to each other in the same way one two three count backwards from that planet so let's say venus i have taken into consideration venus is the pillar here one two three so three houses ahead three houses behind if any planet is placed there this is the third rule of brigo nandinadi of aspects then it means these two planets are connected and in any case if you see that if venus has moon or let's say if venus has any planet in three houses behind and three houses ahead so that means moon venus and saturn they have formed a com conjunction this will definitely give a prediction and you need to decode this this and uh, we will learn this decoding in the coming lessons but for the for now you just need to understand the concept of Nadi Jyotish, concept of Bhrigu Nandi Nadi Jyotish. This is very, very important. So I think <clears throat> the aspects part we have covered and we have done a good job here. Let me revise once again what I have explained you in this class. In Bhrigu Nandi Nadi, we don't take Lagna into consideration. We don't take Dasha for our predictions. We don't take Varg charts or divisional charts into consideration while predicting. So these are the general rules, but in advanced predictive techniques, we will take Varg charts and sometimes Lagna also to pinpoint the events. That will be done in the advanced lectures but in the basic you can note down this Brigunandi Nadi totally focuses on Jupiter because Jupiter is the life force Jupiter is the Jeeva Karaka Jupiter is the Atma Karaka as Sun is the Atma Karaka in Vedic astrology Jupiter is the Atma Karaka in Brigunandi Nadi whether male or female for both Jeeva Karka is going to be Jupiter, but there are additional Jeeva Karkas which are given for females that we will study in the second class. So for now, importance is given to the Jupiter. Wherever Jupiter is placed in your natal chart, we take that as a Lagna and from there we start predicting second house to Jupiter, third house to Jupiter, fourth house to Jupiter the predictions will come in this way that we will learn in the coming classes then we have learned about aspects today aspects the first basic rule i have already mentioned here as per conventional astrology saturn has special aspects of 3 and 10 then mars has special aspects of 4 and 8 
जुपिटर फाइव नाइन राहु केतु फाइव नाइन एंड राहु एंड केतु ऑल्सो हैव अ स्पेशल एस्पेक्ट विच इज कॉल्ड द ट्वेल्थ एस्पेक्ट दिस आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू विद द हेल्प ऑफ एग्जाम्पल बिकॉज आई मिस दिस आई एम रियली सॉरी फॉर दैट लेट्स एज्यूम राहु इज प्लेस्ड हेयर इन द नाइटल चार्ट एंड दिस राहु विल डेफिनेटली पुट इट्स ट्वेल्थ एस्पेक्ट ऑन वीनस ऑलवेज इट्स गोइंग टू गिव रिजल्ट दिस विल डेफिनेटली गिव अ ट्रिगर इन द नेटिव लाइफ बिकॉज वीनस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्लानट इन भ्रिगु नंदी नाड़ी सो दैट वी विल लर्न इन द कमिंग क्लासेज सो दिस इज द स्पेशल ट्वेल्थ एस्पेक्ट देन वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द एनी प्लानट हु इज प्लेस्ड एनी प्लानट हु वी टेक इन टू कंसनट्रेशन द सेकेंड हाउस from that planet is the future of that planet and if any planet is placed there that would definitely signify the future of that particular planet which are which is taken into consideration and if there is no planet placed there then the planet aspecting the second house we will take that planet that planet becomes the future of the planet into consideration and if there are no planets aspecting the second house then we take the sign lord the lord of that sign where it is placed in the natal chart that will signify the future of that planet taken into consideration the same rule will apply for any planet when you take into consideration and the 12th house if any planet is placed placed there that is your past that means that planet is going to push you the push that particular planet which are which is taken into consideration so the same rule again if there is no planet the aspect and there is no aspect then we take the sign lord this is the second rule of aspects <clears throat> then we have learned the th the seven the three and 11 aspect so that means when we take any planet into consideration three houses at three houses behind that is very important definitely those planets are connected to each other and when you take any planet into consideration that is the first house then the second then the third this thing must be clear in the minds of every student because this is very important don't be mistaken that this is the first then second then third no when you take any planet into consideration this is the first house then second then third so this is the second rule then very important rule that is the trine aspect any planet when you take into consideration let's say we are taking moon into consideration so 1 2 3 4 5 so saturn and moon are aspecting each other then from moon 1 2 3 4 5 or simply 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 you can count both ways five or five houses ahead or five houses behind both will work in the same manner so simple it's very simple so any planets who are in trine they are going to aspect each other and definitely they are going to give very positive or negative events in your life depending upon the friendship or enemies of that planet and depending on the degrees that we will learn in the coming classes or maybe in the second class i am going to discuss about the degrees and all that stuff so i think till here everything is very clear i have explained it in a very detailed manner in a very simple manner so that every student who is uh, who is watching this video he will be able to learn what is bhrigu nandi nadi and what are the aspects we take into consideration so today i am going to end this class and in the coming classes we are going to learn more about the bhrigu nandi nadi techniques and in the coming lectures we will learn lot of new new things about bhrigu nandi nadi so that's all for today friends have a nice day and have a nice evening thank you very much